Stephanie. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I also want to extend my deepest thanks to everyone in the clerk's office for their incredible work, not only for the redistricting task force, but for staffing us each and every day. I've had the opportunity to observe boards in other cities and counties during the pandemic, and I can honestly say that no one has a better clerk's office than we do. You have seamlessly expanded our meetings to include remote and hybrid offerings. You worked through December and August recesses. You supported us all night and well into Christmas Eve as we debated the merits of the Tenderloin Emergency Declaration. I'm so proud but not surprised that you all brought that same exceptional service to the redistricting task force. I know those meetings were incredibly contentious and incredibly long, and they could not have occurred without your incredible support. Thank you to Clerk Calvillo, John Carroll, who I, didn't, I, I did not watch <laughs> any of these, but I heard enough. But I know that Jed, John Carroll um, was amazing, and I just want to call him out. And of course, John C., Joe Adkins, and everyone in the clerk's office for your exceptional work and professionalism. Uh, the city absolutely would not function without you. Um, finally, um, I just I want to co-sponsor, or I will be co-sponsoring Supervisor Ronan's resolution urging the United States Congress and President Biden to codify Roe v. Wade and her BLA request uh, to cost out a safe abortion access program. Um, as you can imagine, as Supervisor Melgar said, um, this is beyond disturbing. I have been sick to my stomach since news regarding this draft opinion broke last night. I saw Senator Warren this morning unravel and just watching her, the frustration and the, the years that women have fought for our reproductive rights. I mean, we had to fight a hundred years just to get to vote. And watching Senator Warren unravel today on TV, it broke my heart knowing that she has fought for so long and so many people have gone before her and we are still doing it. And I'm not shocked that this day has come, but I'm nonetheless appalled. Nearly 50 years ago, the Supreme Court rightfully recognized a person's right to have autonomy over their own body and guaranteed federal constitutional protection of the right to access safe abortion care. Most importantly, the court did so through an invocation of the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment, which provides us all with a right to privacy and enshrines this precious liberty. Now today, right-wing extremists who sit on the highest court in our land are threatening to strip women of their reproductive freedoms. This draft opinion threatens our reliance on precedent, and for anyone who went to law school, we know what precedent means. And it's a clear signal that we should expect attacks on other civil liberties that have long been protected through historic landmark Supreme Court decisions. And I'm thinking to myself, what about the fundamental right to marry? Guaranteed to same-sex couples from June 26, 2015, my daughter's birthday. This weekend, I'm officiating my sister's wedding in Sacramento to her future wife, they are expecting a baby. I fear for her future with this SCOTUS. It makes me sick. And I want to take a minute to note, too, that abortions are being banned before assault rifles. These justices and all the advocates should get the words pro-life out of their mouths. This has nothing to do with the sanctity of life. It's all about control and power. And gun homicide, if this were about life, gun homicide and firearms are the leading causes of death among children and pregnant women in America. Especially in San Francisco. This leaked decision will have far-reaching implications, endangering countless lives. And as we await another important decision from the Supreme Court, another gun case, which will likely put more lives in danger by weakening gun laws across this entire country, we have to continue to fight back in every way we can. This Supreme Court is not pro-life. In my opinion, it is absolutely pro-death, given their recent rulings and where we know they're going. 
And let us not forget the majority of justices who will likely support this draft opinion are the same ones who made empty promises to not overturn what they saw as settled law to the Senate Judiciary during their confirmation hearings not too long ago. These are not people who we can rely on their word. These conservative extremists have been working towards this for decades. They are merciless, and they will stop at nothing until they succeed in taking away women's reprodu reproductive rights by any means necessary. This is a catastrophic warning shot, and we have to fight like hell to do all that we can to protect access to essential health care services. And if we don't, we all know too well who is going to suffer. As Supervisor Ronan said, low-income, black, brown, and indig indigenous women. I applaud Governor Newsom's swift commitment to explicitly protect abortion rights in, um, in the California Constitution. However, we cannot rely on states alone to resolve this. With Democrats at the helm in Washington, D.C., they must act now to codify the reproductive rights established through Roe v. Wade and ensure that women may continue to have equitable access to health care. And we must do everything we can as the midterm elections are just 188 days away. I will continue to work with my incredible female colleagues on the Department on the Status of Women, Planned Parenthood, and NARAL, and if they think we're going away or we're going to take this lying down, they have seen nothing yet. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Stephanie. And Mr. President, seeing no names on the roster, that concludes the introduction of new business.